So the global smartphone market has been flourishing like never before. Almost 2.2 billion smartphone devices in the market and according to predictions, if you go with the various uh, research agency estimation, by end of 2020, there will be 6.1 billion smartphone devices in the market. So what exactly the market is driving? What exactly are the elements which are driving this market? Because we have seen enough of innovation in the market. We are talking about 16 megapixel cameras. We are talking about a quad core processors in the, uh, in, in the devices. Then we are talking about 6.5 inches screen. But what would be the next? So talk more about that today. We have got Nicholas, VP Marketing of DxO Image Labs. Welcome, Nicole. So Nicole, uh, you have been into the image processing and uh, you know you have been working in this area for almost like uh, seven to eight years. You started the company. The company was started in 2008 and then in, by 2012 you moved into smartphones and many other things to process the images and to get the ratings out. And I have seen your rating has been really complemented by a lot of top publishers in the market. So how exactly you do that? Well, we've developed a methodology which is very rigorous. Uh, in order to test a smartphone uh, for best image quality for consumers, mm -hmm. you have to make uh, many, many photos in different conditions. Okay. Uh, actually, for each smartphone we test, we shoot 1,500 photos and two hours of video. Mm -hmm. So we, we both test uh, in a lab, so we have a, a bunch of uh, charts image processing software mm -hmm. and we crunch the images and get some data out of it so we we produce what we call a number of objective measurements at the same time we take natural scenes mm -hmm. so we go indoor uh, not far from our location uh, in Paris and we go to uh, every time the same scene we we take many many different shots and these shots are then analyzed by our imaging experts mm -hmm. we call them also golden eyes people okay these people they know how you look at an image in order to evaluate its quality for a uh, human visual system mm -hmm. so they look at the colors at the details at the contrast and many different attributes and from all these data from the lab and from outdoor uh, we collect um, uh, scores then, so we measure scores for different uh, attributes, mm -hmm. that's the way we call it, so color, exposure, stabilization and so forth. And it, at the end of the day we end up with a global score which uh, aggregates all these data, indoor, outdoor. To test a smartphone it takes about a week okay. and several people. Uh, so it's a quite intensive process okay. and what's important and which has, what has been keeping us in the, in the business is that we've developed methodology long time ago mm -hmm. and we stick to we stick to it okay so day to day day after day device after device always the same procedure mm -hmm. so we're sure we compare things in a fair way true and we can compare smartphones or cameras which are produced today with things which were developed 5 10 or 15 years ago oh okay great so uh, if you see today the market the way it has been shaped up Cameras, especially in the smartphone segment, cameras are playing a very important role. How do you see this growth? How do you see this adoption? Do you think cameras are going to be the only element which would be driving the growth of a smartphone? Uh, that's the case today. Camera is a big thing. Uh, there is also the screen, but it's no more the, uh, you know, the audio. Basically, mm -hmm. everybody thinks that it's a granted thing. So mm -hmm. camera, camera is big because, um, I think it's because for consumers, for all of us, uh, you know, in whatever countries, having a device where you can capture your life, you know, you just get it out of your pocket, you press a button and you share, it's, it's essential. Mm -hmm. it, it, everyone wants it. And it has been the dream for people, you know, for uh, uh, centuries. Mm -hmm. And now you have this ability. You, you, you take it out of your pocket, you press a button, you get a picture, you like it, you share. So this is a need which is so common and so... Uh, uh, human uh, that everyone wants wants uh, this to happen you know and the quality is also very important because you want to be able to take photos whatever the light conditions you want to be able to take photos where you are you know moving in a car and whatever so there is there are many situations which are very challenging from a photographic point of view where you consume we us consumer I should say want to take great pictures so quality is, is very important so I think it's going to be a driver for a long time you know it's okay. not it's not over uh, and if you look at the progression of cameras in the past 15 years, mm. cameras are better than smartphones, we're, we're still on a, on, a, on a pretty steep slope, okay. Okay? still increasing. 
Okay. And there are more technologies coming which will continue this uh, this growth. If you see in the last 15 years, the cameras which uh, are used in smartphones, there was two megapixel cameras, started with two megapixel. Now there are dual cameras, not only as a rear, also in front. Mm -hmm. And now again, we are talking about dual 20 and megapixel camera. Where this will lead to us? Well, I, I don't know where. I think it, we, you know, it's going to be for some time. It's difficult to tell you how many decades or, or years. But uh, one thing to understand is that uh, the quality of a camera is directly proportional to the, s the surface of the silicon. Okay. Okay, of the sensitive area. Okay. So because the, the smartphone have a thick a thickness which is uh, uh, pretty constant, you know, you don't want to have a thick thing in your, in your pocket. Correct. The only way to get a better quality is to extend in X and Y. Okay, okay. you can't extend in Z, Z is uh, yeah. so you extend, you know, in or the surface. Yeah. So it's very likely you, that you will have more uh, sensors. sensors and the more you have sensors, uh, obviously the quality will increase, but also you will have to be uh, to have zoom mm -hmm. or uh, bokeh effect, like yes. a nice photographic effect. And all sorts of many, uh, you know, again, will come back with uh, 3D pictures. Mm -hmm. So I think um, basically mm -hmm. I, I've been in this uh, thing for, uh, uh, I should say, almost 20 years now okay. uh, in mobile imaging, <laughs> or close right. to it. <laughs> And I haven't seen any stop so far. <laughs> okay. So I can only guess that it will continue. So can we say, or probably is it safe to assume that uh, camera, smartphone cameras have almost killing the, the lot of us good sizable size of uh, DSLR camera market? Uh, well, maybe not DSLR yet, but sort of eating uh, the, you know, the, the entry level entry DSLR. Entry level kind of, yeah. The DSC is very tough. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's very tough for DSC now because if you have a smartphone, you get the same quality. So for DSLR, there is still a demand for um, you know advanced uh, amateur or serious photographer. Uh, and if you take, if you look at the other extreme, which is medium format camera, mm -hmm. medium format camera were quite um, uh, popular a while back, and and they were so expensive that people would think that they would disappear. Mm. They are still there. So there is still a market for very high quality, high resolution, you know, cameras. So I would not say that DSLR is, is just dead. Okay. Okay. But and entry level definitely it's Entry level up. it's it's really the competition it's is really challenging. Right. Uh, and really what challenging. what what is the role? Because off late I'm seeing that most of these hardware manufacturers who have been bullish about the hardware introducing sixteen megapixel, then twenty megapixel, mm. now they are equally focusing on software side to optimize the output from the camera. Yeah. So how important the role of a software when it comes to the camera quality in a smartphone? Well, the key problem with the software and actually with the uh, software algorithms which are running on the chipsets of the, of the, uh, of the camera phone uh, modules, mm -hmm. of the camera modules, is uh, the number of uh, operation per second. I mean, okay. you have to crunch numbers very fast. Okay. And when you increase resolution, basically you have more and more uh, operations per second to do. And at the same time, people want to have uh, uh, 30 frames per second video, 60 frames per second yeah. video, 4K, whatever. Correct. So the, the, the demand for speed is super high. Okay. okay. And the demand for complex processing is super high because you want complex processing for getting good pictures. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the constraint on the image processing is really huge today. Uh, so if any, another thing is that it's not enough just to have pixels True. because if you don't um, uh, um, compute uh, the data fast enough and good enough, you have nothing out of the out, out of the pie. Correct. So you need good pixels, okay. a number of pixels, but very importantly, a, a very fast and efficient image processing. Uh, off later, I'm also seeing one new trend that uh, choosing a smartphone with good camera quality has been become kind of little, little a tricky business. Uh, the reason I'm telling you, I'm coming from a recent listing which you have released that Google Pixel 2 is scores 98 and uh, iPhone 10 is a scores 97 overall. But if you check it out, the stable image quality, then iPhone 10 is scores 101, while Google Pixel 2 is again, I believe, 99. So mm. in image the iPhone 10 leads, but in overall experience, Google Pixel yeah, 2 yeah. is leads. So 
I wanted to understand how exactly a consumer will decide because unless until people don't pay close attention to this kind of detailing, it will be difficult because as a consumer, I may be looking for a camera, a smartphone camera, which is as good as either for video or for uh, images. So how, how does it work? Well, it's a good question. When we put together the scoring system, we have different possible approach. Uh, one approach would, would have been to produce just one score. Mm -hmm. If you produce win just one score, because there, there is a diversity of usage of the camera, you, you're being too uh, narrow-minded, okay, basically. So we decided, okay, let's split the scores into okay. sub-scores mm. and then different, uh, what we call image quality attributes. So first, you divide by photo and video. And if you prefer video, well, look for video score. If okay. you prefer photo, look for photo score. Okay. And then you look at the different attributes. We have attributes for zoom, for bokeh, for stabilization. So you have to look into the details. Mm. so that you make the choice depending on what you as a photographer or as you know smartphone users uh, are, are looking for so it, it's there is there is um, always a trade-off a single metric will have been better because it's simple but in photography it won't make any sense and very often when we put together a scoring system photographer will come to me and say yeah uh, uh, um, reducing to one number I mean you can't do this okay we can do it so we're gonna split it okay we are gonna have different scoring so that everyone can find his you know is uh, um, uh, what he's looking for so if people just don't want to care well they look at the score if they care they can look at the details and make a choice which is a wise so choice it's depending all about on their your selection and what are your preferences exactly so okay. uh, now uh, it's true that in today's internet world the people just look at the key message okay, okay. and the key numbers there is nothing it can do against it. You know. So there is no way I can get the best video camera with the best image quality camera. Well, you, yes, you look at the score. You look at video score, at photo score, and then you can make your choice. Yeah, but right okay. now there is no, no such device which is you know, leading in both the scores. Um, no, but it may, it may change. Maybe uh, yeah. you know, the next generation of Google Pixel, they're going to fix the, the video or the photo, I don't remember, and then they'll be first for, for both. So, um, or, or vice versa. Uh, so this is nothing. This is not something I can do anything about. It. This is something the manufacturer can. Exactly. Can no, work no, I completely yeah. agree with yeah. that. So you have been in this industry for almost like twenty years. Your company has been in all, almost like close to a decade now. What are the great trends you can foresee in the smartphone camera market? Well, I think I explained that first. There will be several modules. Uh, today we don't have Zoom. So one way or another, with uh, multiple modules or with folded optics, you will see zoom. Okay. Uh, and you will have, probably you will continue to have um, uh, imp imp improvement in the, in the performance at low light. Okay. Because people uh, sh like to shoot photos in, in very tough conditions. Mm. Um, so they, they, they are, you know, a few of the directions that are possible. Uh, they, they, with the new uh, multi-modules camera, now you can have bokeh, which is very much to what you, the kind of effect you can do with a DSLR. So I think, you know, the trend will be to bring uh, even a uh, more advanced uh, photographic experience that you could do before with DSLR and will be embedded in your, in your uh, smartphone. Another thing which we're seeing is that there is a lot of... Uh, improvement in the video with okay. very fast you know 60 fps time lapse things like that mm -hmm. so this will continue also to increase uh, uh, especially you know young uh, the youth are very savvy with uh, short videos fast video things so they they will i'm sure the youth will help us to yes, decide definitely. you know where where this yeah. thing is going because so they're what very could savvy. Be that i would like to conclude this discussion mm -hmm. with one last question that what could be that one game changer you see in a smartphone camera market? Um, I think the, the game changer will be uh, in, in terms of business when all these technology which are embedded only in the high end will go down and, and we've seen that. So very uh, shortly and it's specifically probably interesting for the Indian market is that these technologies which are only for the 800 you know dollar uh, handset will will be uh, affordable for okay. 200 or less uh, medium range uh, smartphones okay. and this would be this will be great for Indian uh, market where obviously your position in the surprise is going range. to play a vital role I think and it's, it's going to be a, a, a tough battle uh, obviously uh, between Chinese and Indians and others uh, in this in this market all right okay okay thanks Nicole thanks for your time thank you and very it was much a really nice okay. discussion thank, thank you. you very much